Alrighty, y'all. Hello. Welcome to what should be a straight up video, no intro, explaining Europe to Americans. I'm an American. <laughs> and I need a European to explain Europe to me. This has been suggested a couple times. I have uh, Tomas on email recently reminded me of this one. This is from a channel called Hello Erica. So be linked down below. Make sure to check this original video out uninterrupted and browse her stuff. Let's go. So let's start off with geography. Unfortunately, or fortunately, Europe does not look like this. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Jeez. It looks like this. Europe has over 40 countries, so it's much more than just France, Germany, and Italy. And yes, uh, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because that is what most Americans think. France, Germany, Italy, and maybe the UK, if they're, you know, one step smarter. That's it. Uh, you ain't getting anything else out of Americans when you tell them to name places in Europe. <laughs> Saying you visited Europe is a very broad term. Because it is. This part of Europe is very different from this part of Europe. The biggest country in Europe is Russia, and the smallest country in Europe is the Vatican City which is basically a giant building with a giant park. Europe can be That's crazy. on how you look at it. Hold up, hold up. This is literally Vatican City. And this is its own country, right? Would it be called a city-state? <laughs> look at that. Oh my god. That's actually crazy. And park. Europe can be divided depending on how you look at it. It can be divided politically, geographically, or historically. For example, here, the east from the west, and here, the red from the green from the turquoise, or potato tomato. Potato tomato. That's a fun one. Regions. So let's look at the general way of how Europe can be divided. Firstly on the list is, of course, Western Europe. Yes, Western Europe gets the most press, right? That's like the most famous part of Europe. Okay. These are the countries that people want to move in, live in, and be born in. This is what? This is France, uh, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland, and then Austria. Okay. They are economically better off, and they have a lot of work opportunities. These countries include Germany, France, Austria, Belgium, and if you don't count the British islands as their separate thing, then they also are in the west of Europe. Next up we True. have yeah. Northern Europe. A lot of these countries are doing great, or even they're better off in terms of quality of life. Except for Sweden, it's having a rough patch with crimes, apparently. But uh -huh. they're pretty cold, and in the winter it gets really dark, so not a lot of people want to move there, necessarily. Oh not yeah, because they're, they're so they're far north. when it comes to weather, but also when it comes to their friendliness scale. They are usually considered a bit more unfriendly or reserved. These countries are also referred to as Nordic or Scandinavian countries. They have a lot of Viking... Yes, I'm glad she put that there because I wouldn't have known that. I'll admit it. I wouldn't have known that about Finland not being Scandinavian. Uh, if you go back a couple years before I started studying this stuff for my channel, like the idea of my channel is I'm an American trying to break this American bubble and go out and learn about the world, right? Uh, because a lot of this stuff is just not taught or not retained here. Now, yes, that's something I've learned is that Finland is, yes, it's Northern Europe, but it is not a Scandinavian country. So Heritage, there's a difference. And they like to fish. They have a lot of fish and water around them. Moving on to Southern Europe. These are the countries that people like to visit on vacation. Mm. They're warm, maybe too warm for some people. And by some people, I mean me. They have great oh. food and wine. They're pretty friendly. And some of them like to take naps in the middle of the day, which sounds like a dream. But their economy is not doing that great. I think that definitely has to do with weather because I've lived somewhere, you know, where it's not, it's kind of hot in the summer, but it's not too bad. And then, you know, it's pretty cold in the winter, i.e. here in Chicago area of Illinois. Now, I've also lived on the border of New Mexico, Texas, and Mexico. So way, way down there. Uh, if you didn't know, New Mexico is really hot, and the winters are, like, perfect, especially in southern New Mexico. But uh, the summers are, like, just brutal. And, yeah, when it's hot out, you get a lot of sun. The sun is, like, laser beam, and it does make you tired. You wake up early, and you feel energized, but then by, like, 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock p.m., uh, 
dude, you're like, I need to take a nap. <laughs> it's gotta be, gotta and be the same thing. Why is this section a darker orange? Well, I'll get to that in a bit. And now we have Eastern Europe. Ooh, I feel like she's gonna trigger some people because I have seen enough online to know that some of these people here in Central Europe get a little triggered. I, I don't know nothing about it, so I'm not gonna weigh in on it. But I have a feeling some of these countries right around here are going to be like, whoa, hold up. <laughs> well, the problem with Eastern Europe is that nobody wants to be called Eastern Europe. This division is based Why? on the time when the Fire Nation attacked. So a lot of these countries oh, yeah. were occupied. Okay. Since Eastern Europe sense. is not the best area to be associated with, countries like to identify themselves with other names. For example, Romania, Croatia likes to be called the Balkans. Mm. Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania are the Baltics. But to be honest, they're quite high up geographically so maybe they could be considered even northern europe yeah i would almost consider those northern europe uh also boy is that confusing at first i i can get it pretty quick but like americans would hear that and get those mixed up baltics and balkans i'm pretty sure the first time i've heard those like i i would get those mixed up a lot <laughs> poland czech republic and slovakia likes to be called the central europe and now we're left with countries that are not doing that great for multiple reasons. And I would say maybe they would rather be called Slavic countries rather than Eastern Europe. You can be both, but one of them sounds a bit more cool than the other one. That's what I just accidentally, and I guess is the better option, that's what I usually do call these countries. Like if I'm thinking of, uh, you know, Ukraine and Poland and Czech Republic, Slovakia, Croatia, like I just go straight to Slavic countries. That's like what I call them. Um, and I guess that's a better option. One. So if you agree with the concept of Central Europe, then scratch whatever I said before about Europe looking like this. Now Europe looks like this. And I have to say, I have nothing against <laughs> being called Central Europe or the existence of Central Europe. I think it's just funny how nobody wants to be called Eastern European. That so is then funny. So lastly, we have Central Europe. Basically all the German speaking countries and more. Well, yeah, not really, right? Because these, these four don't speak German at all. Only Austria, Switzerland, you really can't consider German speaking because they have like so many languages there. I guess Austria and Germany. These but. countries are located in the core economic region of Europe. They have stable governments and a relatively high quality of life. And these countries also love beer. And they like to fight yes. on who drinks the most beer. This is an interesting correlation. You know what? I'm glad she brought that up. This is a better uh, representation. Central Europe. Look, I know. I, I'm finding out all of Europe. Like, all these European countries, any direction you go, seem to make really cool foods, really cool drinks. And I'm sure, to an extent, cool beers as well. But if we're talking about just beer consumption and beer domination, man... Central Europe has got it going on, for sure. I found. Czech Republic's the highest, geography, right? But it's an interesting fact. With all that said, the number one thing you should remember is that Europe is not a country. It is a continent that has a lot of countries. And if you know where the capital of Paris, Berlin, and London is, you're doing a good job, and you should pat yourself on the shoulder. And I definitely don't expect you to know where Malta is, which is right here. I forgot that. I've taken quizzes on geography. I've done better than I thought. Some of them really got me tripped up. Yeah, I never remember where Malta is. <laughs> it's very small. I don't even expect people from France to know the capital of Latvia. So if you know a little bit about this place, it's already pretty good. I think one of the most important things is just not to make assumptions. For example, calling Lithuania basically Russia is very disrespectful. Oof, yeah. Or I am typically someone that wouldn't try and do that anyway, but I've learned, yeah, definitely don't assume things. Like, you know, I, I'm someone who doesn't know a lot about European countries, so I'm not going to assume, like, oh, Lithuania is just like Russia. No, I would never say that, because that's usually not correct. <laughs> just don't do that. Or Ireland is the same as UK. No, don't say that. Not I even I know that. To do. So maybe open a map before opening your mouth. Just a friendly suggestion. And also, maybe it's helpful to know the difference between Europe and European Union. Mm, which that I'll too. cover that in a bit. And now we can that move on too. to yeah. history. Well, Europeans have a lot of beef with each other. UK <laughs> and Ireland, Romania and Hungary, Portugal and Spain, and Russia with basically everybody in the world. 
<laughs> it's all because of history. Europe <laughs> has a lot of it. There were a lot of agreements, disagreements, and wars over land in the past and also mm. now. Some stuff is serious and some stuff ended up countries just making fun of each other. For example, Austria making fun of Germany, France and the Netherlands <laughs> making fun of Belgium. Yeah, y'all have had a lot of conflicts. Big and small, though. A lot of them small. And a lot of, I love the little rivalries, right? The little making fun of each other. I mean, that's fun, right? It's not the same at all. But like here, you know, we're very we're almost religious with sports here. So people get heated about rivalries, state rivalries even, right? Illinois versus Wisconsin, Oregon versus Washington, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's not not the same. Remember, I'm not saying it's the same. But yeah, that's type, that type of stuff is just lighthearted. It's fun. And I assume there's a lot of that going on in Europe as well. Or the whole Scandinavian area making fun of the Danes because of their weird sounding language. Because of history, we have cities <laughs> like this that were weirdly divided between Netherlands and Belgium. They even um, what? What the hell is this? There is a city that's in both countries? We have houses that are divided into two, so pretty strange. And we <laughs> if you live... Okay, is this the front door? So where do you live? If someone lives in this house... Do you live in Belgium or do you live in the Netherlands? We also have a city like this in the Baltics between Estonia and Latvia. Then when you compare Europe uh, to the US, you can see that America is actually bigger in size than Europe, much bigger. Europe is two thirds of America. But the main difference between these two is that one of them is much more densely populated than the Europe. That's something I didn't know either before the channel. I didn't know Europe had double or more than double actually. The population we have here that's insane the other the us has 300 million people living in there yeah and europe has 700 million and yet they're smaller in size each country here wow. has their own rules their own languages their own culture and so a more accurate comparison would be something like this every country yeah. is their own little america and that is a great way to put it and i just covered that recently um in a languages video i looked at all the different I, I mean it wasn't all of them but like i looked at a lot of different languages at once in europe and it just really puts into perspective like how crazy the population like it's so densely populated and there's so many differences in all these you know micro distances that you would face in europe whereas you would never really encounter that here in the us it's crazy and what i mean by that we can take a look at germany for example the country is divided into 16 states. Ooh, and I should look at state Germany flags. And this Germany is very different. They also sound very different. When they talk to each other, they might not even understand each other. Plus, we also have Austria right here that also speaks German, but their German is very different from the standard German. But they are right next to each other. So how did this happen? Uh, history and culture and a lot of the stuff in between. Then we can also look at UK, which is fully separated from Europe by water. Here, the yeah. Now the UK is equally interesting because I heard, I, and this is something I want to dive into soon. I've just heard from comments that even in the UK, like there are so many different dialects and and also somewhat languages as well. It's not just English, from what I've heard, but you you can hear so much going on in just like thirty minutes away. So, you know, you click somewhere here and then you drive 30 minutes or an hour west. It's going to be a different experience. And I think that's that I can't wrap my head around. You you see differences in the U.S. over long distances, but not over like 30 minutes. That's crazy. The country is divided into four regions, which is Scotland, Wales, England and Northern Ireland. But if you look deeper under the surface, it's also divided into smaller regions. Whoa. And if you try harder, you can also divide it into just towns, cities, and villages. The UK is an interesting example of wow. how the language and the culture developed a little bit differently, even though they're right next to each other and the country is quite small. Here, people can recognize your status or class based on where you grew up in. Which That's is, crazy. Um, a thing, I suppose. Now, let's talk about the economical state of Europe. Firstly, let's cover what is the EU, or European Union, as they say it is an international organization comprising of 27 countries that govern common social economic and security policies eu is in europe but the whole europe is not in the eu mm, just yeah. like a square is a rectangle but a rectangle is not a square what i mean <laughs> is that not all european countries are a part of this some do want to join and some want to leave 
for a variety of reasons. From my understanding, this is the EU flag, not the Europe flag, but we do right. use it as a Europe flag to represent the unity of Europe. Thank you. Because I've had people that are picky try and like scold me in the comments for putting an EU flag, um, you know, over various topic videos where some random country might be um, mentioned in a video and it's not in the EU. Be like, dude, no, no, no. Like, I'm not, I'm not ever saying that every country in Europe is in the EU. I'm just, look, YouTube thumbnail, you only have so much room, right? It, it's just so much easier to put the European Union flag. Uh, look, most people know you're just referring to Europe with that flag. It's not meant to be taken literally. So uh, I'm glad she mentioned that, that you can casually, for my purposes, on a thumbnail for a YouTube video, this gets the point across that that flag is over something European. That's it. Uh, very basic function and it Which works. It's a little bit confusing, but there's not much I can do. The nice part about the EU is that a lot of European countries share the same currency, which is the Euro currency. Yeah, now that- Not all of them use Euros, but many do. These countries like to stick to their currencies. So if you try and buy some groceries with your American dollars, you will most likely be rejected. I oh, I, I would imagine. Now, what I don't know all of them, but I randomly know because I've seen some videos on it. Like, for example, the Czech Republic, they're in the EU, I believe, 100%. But they don't use euros. They use, um, I can't remember what it is now, like crowns, right, or something. But yeah, they have their own currency. They don't use euros. So I know that's one example. I'm Like she said, I'm sure there's others. But Unless you're in an airport or some kind of tourist hotspot, then uh, it will not go that well. I mean, would you sell me a sandwich if I say I have 200,000 Animal Crossing bells? <laughs> Probably not. And if you said yes, I'm not sure about your business practices. 20 <laughs> EU countries use euros, but in total it's 27 because some countries decided to make it their currency unofficially. But not all EU countries switched to Euro, and some of them still stayed with their old currency. So oh, if you're wow. traveling to those countries... Oh yeah, the UK, yeah, they have pounds. Romania has their own. Poland has their own. Okay. ...ahead what kind of money do they use. And ignore UK, because I forgot they, they decided to leave, or they already left. So they're just doing their own thing. But many countries yeah, over the years did switch to using Euros, which is very convenient when you travel, but as a Latvian, I remember having LATs and being very sad that we're gonna switch to Euros now. The only reason I didn't want it to happen because I really like this coin and, you know, nostalgia reasons. Well, you gotta collect them, right? Get a bunch of those and have a collection of LATs. This is a cool coin. Cultural reasons. But now I don't have to exchange my currency or try and always calculate in my mind how much is this in LATs or how much is this in Euros. So, overall, a good thing i think you can let me know if you have an opinion about this now the last thing on yeah the list convenience wise it should be a good thing is culture america is not europe and no. europe is not america we run things differently around here like for example it's very rare to find a building that has central ac most of us just <laughs> have a big heat wave in the middle of the summer and we suffer for two weeks and then it's <laughs> all good nice. but the normal ac is a bit more common in southern europe but not everywhere in some ways, we're not that different from you. And maybe we're not even better than you, but we certainly think we are. I mean, oh. we also have McDonald's, and we do like our convenient cars, but we're not that obsessed with it. And our cities don't look like the medieval times. I mean, some do, but we certainly stopped throwing trash out of the windows and burning witches. <laughs> As mentioned before, Europe has a lot of countries, so there's a lot of different cultures, foods, traditions, and preferences. And so I gathered some cultural things to generally know about Europe. The first thing on my list is that you're probably not Italian. If the only thing <laughs> yeah. that makes you Italian is that you took an ancestry test that told you that your blood is 57% Italian, you're probably not Italian. It doesn't count if you have Italian ancestors from the 1800s that settled to America. If you didn't grow up in Italy, you yeah. don't have any Italian relatives like grandparents, parents, or aunts and uncles, and you don't know how to speak Italian, I'm sorry to say this, but you're not Italian. Being able to pronounce mozzarella correctly or having a family recipe of spaghetti and meatballs <laughs> doesn't give you an Italian passport. But this is so true because this is very American, right? To act like American, but then randomly also act like you're Italian or you're Irish or whatever, right? Whatever the case is. Very common here. Now, you know, I, I probably did this when I was younger. I'm not sure. But now I realize, like, I've mentioned on the channel because it's kind of relevant for the channel. I am totally American. Like, no doubt. I'm from here. I was born here. 
my parents are from here. Now, you know, going back a couple generations, you know, I have family from Czechoslovakia, which of course it was called that at the time. And then of course I have family from uh, Cork, uh, Ireland. So there's that. If you were curious, that's, you know, either side, my mom and dad, right? Uh, But I'm not claiming like, hey, look at me. I'm Czech. Hey, I'm Irish. Nope. Like that's, that's my heritage. But as you can clearly see and hear, I'm American. So I think that's the best way to put it. I think it's really cool to kind of get in touch with your roots if you can find that out. You know, know what family members were who and where they came from and when they came here. I think that's really good and that's healthy to do. But yeah, it's all in good fun. I mean, Americans acting like they're Italian. I'm sure that gets kind of funny and then maybe teetering on annoying to Europeans or Italians in, in that case. Um, but yeah, it's all in good fun. Plus, spaghetti and meatballs is an Italian-American dish. They don't really eat that in Italy. <laughs> don't get me wrong. It's a nice fact. That's hilarious. It's fun to know where your ancestors came from. Yes. But it doesn't mean that you have the right to claim to be this nationality. Then Fair. a lot of people here are bilingual, but that does not mean that they know English. Oftentimes in most schools, you learn three languages. Wow. Your language, the neighboring country's language, and most likely English or whatever wow. else you want to learn. But that does Dude, that is so crazy. That is really smart and cool. That is just not the norm here. Now, you can choose to learn some languages, but it's usually when you're older. At a young age, they don't. They just teach you English. That's it. Um, rarely, some schools might te- teach you Spanish from a young age, but it's going to be rare. Uh, obviously, as a whole, you know, it'd be it'd be so nice if the average American could learn at least two, maybe three languages by the time they graduate high school. Like, that'd be awesome, right? That's goals for sure. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. It does not mean everybody speaks English or want to speak English. So it's always nice to learn a little bit before you come here. Even just yeah. knowing how to say please and thank you is already something. Yeah, that's then what I want to do. I want Eastern to learn Europe basics. In Northern Europe, people don't really like small languages. talking with strangers. Plus, walking and smiling alone is considered weird. They probably will think you're crazy. People here are reserved and cold because it probably is cold most of the time and they don't like to waste their energy on things that don't really matter. So if you see them smiling, it's most likely sincere. Then next we have Sundays. Some countries consider Sunday as a holy... This one, I... Ooh. Sundays, man, are days to get get stuff done around here. (laughs) This one would would bother me a little bit. Everything closed on Sundays, and I know it's not everything, but it's a lot of things closed on Sundays. Oof, that one's a tough pill to swallow. Only day, so a lot of Yikes. shops and grocery stores are closed. Oh, or they man. might not be open at their usual schedule. Germany and Poland are quite serious about it, so you'll just have to deal with it. Food is also a big part of our culture. Although it says green, open, a lot of countries do have open supermarkets and stuff in on, or on Sunday. Actually, more than I thought, so that's not that bad. So here is a subsection about food and restaurants. Well, first of all, Let's talk about additives. The EU is cautious yeah. of what we put in our food. This As is no contest. As you can no see, contest. the fries from McDonald's Europe here wins. is a list of ingredients in the UK. Look at that. Look at that beautiful short little list. And look at all this stuff. K, which oh. I think by that time was part of the EU. And here is a list of ingredients that they use in the US. Way more things that I don't know what they are. Don't get me wrong. There's got to be like, look how embarrassing that is. <laughs> Why the hell do they put all this stuff in there when they could just make it with three or four ingredients? I just don't get it. It's like, how obvious are you that there's there's no good reason for this, right? They're just literally poisoning us. <laughs> we have many ingredients that start with the letter E and end with a number, but we are very selective of which ones we want to bring into our club. What I've learned from food theory is that EU takes the approach of guilty until proven innocent. Meaning, if the additives are proven to not be harmful, then they're accepted into our food chain. I'd say that's a good system. Obviously, you know how it works here. Throw it in there. If it ends up killing people, I guess we'll look into taking it out. (laughs) Each country has their own specialties and traditional food, so there's lots to experience and to try. So we'll probably find it a little bit weird if you stick to McDonald's and Starbucks and Dunkin' that you can find back at home a 10-minute drive away from your house. But I do have to say, if you're going to these places to find something new, something that is not sold... Yeah, I uh, I won't name names, but I know someone that's traveled abroad many times and they just look for American stuff and it really triggers me. Like, holy smokes, you're in 
a country known for food across the ocean. Go get some local food. Holy smokes, like, what are you doing? <laughs> the newer country, then I think it's fine. I've done it. For some reason, people are judging me for this, but I want to know what a macaron tastes like at a French McDonald's. I'm curious, is it good? Is it bad? Oh, yeah. Should I buy it again? I would find time Give to try, a... like, big name restaurants in different countries because they're actually different than here in the U.S. Um, you know, I've looked at many videos of, like, McDonald's in Australia. It looks kind of phenomenal. <laughs> it's like a nice restaurant there, whereas here it's, like, you know, bottom barrel, and it's expensive. Restaurants, prepare yourself that the service will be just okay. They will not go above and beyond to please your every need. They might not be fast and they yeah. might not be friendly. They are humans that have emotions and down days and are not full of energy all the time. And they will leave you alone to eat your food and might not check up on you at all. I, I mean, that's pretty good. I I'm cool with that. If you really need something dire, I'm sure you can like, you know, flag them down somehow. Other than that, like they'll leave you alone. You just do your thing. I've been to plenty of cafes it's and cool restaurants where they did have very friendly and good service, but not all of them will be like this. And so just be mentally prepared that they will not take your dish back and give you a refund if you just don't like it. You'll just have to pick <laughs> something better next time. Then also we have tipping. In most countries, waiters receive a fair minimum wage, but it's still minimum wage. Makes so sense. It's quite low. So we do like tipping, but just five to 10%, a mm. more modest tip. Yeah. Or you just round off the bill that the number looks nice. But the tipping etiquette can be different for each country. For example, in Germany, you tip when you pay. But in France, you leave a tip on the table when you leave and already paid. Uh, what I okay. hear a lot of people from America living or visiting Europe say that we don't have good Mexican food. And it's true because Mexico is right here, uh -huh. right next to the United States. Hey, look at us. We could claim something y'all don't know how to do right. Woohoo! <laughs> we have amazing Mexican food. Obviously, it's right there. And many people go between the countries, right? You can go to Mexico, get a great meal. You can go to any state and get a great Mexican meal. Because, uh, well, if you didn't know, a lot of Mexicans have came to the U.S. So you can g do either one. Um, and Mexican food is so freaking good. And I'm not talking about Americanized Mexican food like Taco Bell or something. I'm talking about real, authentic Mexican food. Such amazing dishes and tons and tons of dishes that a lot of people don't think about. So, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of that one, that we, that we have a lot to choose from when it comes to Mexican food. Hey, I got to take a win when we can get a win here because we all know we just covered it a few minutes ago. You guys win pretty much for the whole food scene. So we got to claim something here, okay? <laughs> and Mexico is pretty far away from Europe. Yeah, so it is. So a lot of people that know how to cook good Mexican food come to Europe to open Mexican restaurants. And that makes sense because we have a whole ocean between us. Don't get me wrong, I would love to go to a Mexican restaurant, but I don't even know how good Mexican food tastes like because I've never been to Mexico. Because mm. again, it's pretty far away. So maybe you should implement geography classes into your school education. Just saying. When visiting restaurants, cafes, and other public places, it is important for us to be spatially aware and not be too loud. Americans have a reputation here in Europe that they're loud and annoying. Maybe they're not necessarily American, they might be Canadian, but just be aware of the situation, mm -hmm. if it's quiet or not, and how loud you're speaking. This one I've always seen come up and I always ch challenge because it's like, really? Like, are we 10 times louder than other people? I have a hard time believing that. But I do get it. I think we are just talkative. And so if, I guess if we're there with other Americans and we're somewhere in Italy or France or wherever, like, I get that we might stand out because of that. I just, I would like to see it in person because i'm capable of just being quiet and even if i'm with someone like we can just talk quiet because i know i'm in a european country so i'll just make sure to quiet down and try and blend in so i think that i could do that because that would make sense but i f maybe a lot of people just forget and end up slipping and being loud that's what that's what my guess is especially in countries like Germany. They take it really seriously and they will point it out that you're being too loud. <laughs> now, all that being said, Europe is not a perfect place. We have a lot of issues of our own. Europe is considered to be pretty safe from the rest of the world, but we still have crimes here. Oh, yeah. And as I said before, Sweden, I'm looking at you. Sweden has a crime problem. Especially in big cities, I, we have... I've never looked into this type of stuff, so this is all going above my head. Obviously, there's crime. There's crime. There's lots of bad stuff. There's lots of rough areas in any European country. I know that. And I thought that was pretty apparent on this channel. A lot of people have said, like, 
you know, Europe isn't perfect, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, I know that. I'm pointing out cool stuff that I learned. And a lot of stuff really does, you know, kind of tickle my interest. It, it's fascinating. A lot of stuff, I think, you know, certain things are done better than they are here. Um, but yeah, obviously there's things here that are awesome, like best in the world, maybe, right? There's obviously things in European countries that are awesome, some of the best in the world. So there's always highs and lows for everywhere. And I'm not one of these people that thinks Europe is perfect. I've never once said anything near that. I just want to make that clear. And Paris would be the first city that comes to mind that has this issue. Oh yeah, I've then heard Europe Paris also has racial discrimination. beautiful, but really Some rough too. countries more than others. But an interesting statement that I've heard is that we dislike or have prejudices against people from other countries rather than skin color, which I think the description also fits. So we also do have our problems. So here are some of my final thoughts. Well, if you're an American living in America, you probably don't really care about the intricacies of being European and living in Europe. And She's right. Most Americans don't care. And I, I get it. We're over here. It's very easy to fall into an American bubble because that's how it's fed to you, right? Our news cycle, uh, you know, everything here, sports, everything here has to do with America. So if you don't have any uh, drive to learn about anywhere else, you don't have to, <laughs> you know, like we just have our own world over here. Uh, and if you are okay with that, then that's it. That's America's life, right? Now, I do like a lot of stuff over here and I've consumed that American bubble my whole life. And so the whole point of this channel is me, you know, bursting that and discovering more about the world because I tend to find the whole world interesting, not just America. Uh, it doesn't mean I don't like America and it doesn't mean I think every other country is better. It just means I want to learn about other stuff and it's fun to see different perspectives and different cultures and languages and et cetera. Unfortunately, that kind of thought process and uh, curiousness about other places in the world is just kind of rare <laughs> in the U.S. A lot of people just don't care. And that's that's fine, I guess. That's okay. We don't know everything about you. And I don't think you should know everything about us. We have our own stuff to deal with. But I do think we can learn from each other. For yeah, example, having free public bathrooms or universal health care. If you're planning on visiting European countries, I would suggest just looking up some stuff about what to do or what not to do and some little language bits and pieces of saying please and thank you. Yeah, she's got it exactly right. That's what I would do. That's why I said in my last video about languages, I want to learn some basics of different languages be just because I think it's interesting. And of course, if I had an itinerary tomorrow, not, not tomorrow, but you know what I mean? Like coming up where, and you know, in name European country here, I would definitely take time and learn some basic phrases before I go. I would never show up and act like, hey, everyone uh, cater to me and speak my language. Uh, no, I want to try and fit in and, and try and show people respect. Like, hey, I'm trying to learn the basics of your language. I think it's beautiful and I want to learn some of it. I don't want to just walk in and speak American and be like, yeah, everyone look at me. No, no, no. Uh, that was good. That was good. This will be linked in the description down below. Make sure to check that out. Uh, you know, there's a couple bits and pieces we probably skipped through there. And of course, browser channel. That was fun. That is explaining Europe to Americans in a matter of minutes. That's pretty hard to do. I think she did a good job. The funny part is that a lot of this really we don't, a lot of it we don't technically learn much about in school. And, you know, of course we do have sections in school where we learn about history. And of course we learn world history and world religions and blah, blah, blah. Like we do have that. It's just, I think a lot of people here don't retain it. They just get through the school, they take their tests and they try and do their best and then they, they leave and they don't retain these things. So, you know, it is very bizarre, but it's fun to see videos like this because unfortunately some basic ideas that you see here, uh, a lot of Americans aren't aware of. So I don't know, it's kind of fascinating. Can't wait to see you down in the comments. I appreciate you watching. My name is Ian. You're watching I Never Rocker. Until next time, y'all, I'll catch you later.